Hi, I'm Mike with Uketastic. I'm sitting here. We're just outside of Software Craftsmanship in McHenry County. I interrupted Tim Ottinger to come out and uh, do a quick interview. Uh, Tim has written the Agile and a Flash cards, or he co-authored the Agile and a Flash uh, Flash cards that Agile teams can use to make sure that they're they're on path on the path of Agile enlightenment. Um, also, he contributed to the Clean Coder uh, book, which uh, all of us are familiar with. And uh, but thank you very much for sitting down with me. Uh, the first question I kind of want to lead off with is, you wrote the, these this list of all these. Um, core concepts to Agile, and it's a pretty thick stack. Was there anything that when you, you started off with kind of maybe changed as you were maybe something in, in time realized wasn't quite the way it was when you, because that's the thing with Agile is you learn. Right. Um, not so much, actually. We, we actually had, um, we incubated for about a year and a half, Jeff Langer and I did, uh, on the website, and then when it actually came time to build a book, we really just thought we were going to take articles mm-hmm. off of the website and, and turn them into cards. Mm-hmm. But we really couldn't do that because we realized that we were addressing too techy of an audience. So we ended up breaking it down to, you know, four sections so we can talk about, you know, the project leaders and the managers and the planners and, and, and everybody in there. Um, I think the cards have actually stood up pretty well. Our problem was that we limited it to 52. Okay. So you, you had to do it a few times in a year if you're going to go through it. Yeah, that's right. You, you can do one a week and, mm-hmm. and some teams have. Um, but now there's just so much more that I wish I could put in there. There's mm-hmm. so much that's behind those, you know. It's a very lossy compression. Right. When you take, you know, whatever's in your life. And you're you to making these little axioms. And now, now it's a four by six card. And you, right. So the chapter two from Clean Code mm-hmm. actually is condensed to, I think, a, like a four or five point card somewhere in the back of the deck now. Yeah. So you so. could have saved a lot of money on the book and made it a pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> but so it sounded like it wasn't originally a going to be flashcards. It sounded like it was going to be a book originally. And it well, it's kind of, kind of a weird origin. So um, I was working for Object Mentor, this mm-hmm. is several years ago, in Des Moines at Geo Learning. And one of the gentlemen there, I knew he was a good programmer, his name is George. Hi, George. Um, he was, uh, he asked me, he had missed a morning session, mm-hmm. and he asked me if I could catch him up. Right. And so as an act of complete chutzpah, I said, Meet me in the training room with three index cards and a sharpie, and we'll catch you up. Okay. I had no idea how I was going to do it. <laughs> but uh, we wandered in, and I know George is smart. I know he knows what he's doing. He just hadn't done TDD. So I wrote down Bob Martin's three rules, right. and I did the red-green refactor, and I did the first properties. And uh, he understood well enough that in the next session he could join with the group and contribute equally. Yeah. And I realized people are way smarter than we think and we right. teach things over four hours it could have been 15 minutes right they can and then practice and and especially with uh, experienced people they might not have maybe followed specific rules but so much of this is a distillation of practices that are already out there and right. when you kind of people are and you can point to say oh it's this thing people might be like oh okay i can relate that to x y and z that right. i did over the last five years or yeah, so just give me the cheat sheet. Yeah. So then Jeff and I thought we would write a book, and it would be a companion deck to the book. Okay. Um, but nobody understood that <laughs> um, until we got to pragmatic programmers, and they said, you know, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. You right. know, we don't think we're interested in the book. Oh, we just want the cards. We just want the deck. Yeah. So uh, we spent uh, you know, a chunk of a year working on the deck. So there isn't anything that's, that's really wrong in there, mm-hmm. but I think nothing could go far enough, and nothing could go deep enough to really get to the important stuff. So since then, I've been boning up more like on brain science, David Rock and, mm-hmm. and Carol Dweck and Chick Sent Me High and, and Height and all these different guys. I really kind of wish that I could have earlier gone through and done all of this about how to coach and how to learn, and mm-hmm. that could have been like a whole section. or a whole uh, So deck. not even just how to be an agile team, but how to lead an agile team. Yeah, and how to think about leading. Okay. Yeah, that's – don't really think about thinking uh, – <laughs> think about leading too much. Uh, I mean, a lot of us are, are developers who are kind of like focused on just how I can contribute, but taking that step back. And I mean, is it is that even like going to the next level of your career, or is that something that even applies to people who are working on a team and aren't in a leadership position? I think that um, I think it applies to individuals. Um, I think it was uh, was it uh, was maybe Keith Ray or maybe uh, Jeffries or maybe Rainsberger was talking about having um, an inner critic. Right. that when they're practicing writing code, 
half of their brain is split and is critiquing and observing how they go about solving their code problems and how they're thinking through the problems. So they're actually kind of like two people, right? which that's hard to do. Um, but by mindfully practicing your code art, mm -hmm. you can suddenly realize you know, better ways that you can step things out and things you didn't realize that you need to learn. It's kind of like, um, so ultimate small community, uh, uh, two pair programmers. You know, one person, uh, while they're typing, they're thinking very pragmatically and very detailed and, right. and very, you know. How do I solve this problem? Yeah, they're just gonna get that thing to happen. Yeah. And then the other person who's watching them, yeah, they're watching for syntax errors or what have yeah. you. But they're also thinking, is this the right direction? Is this yeah. a good answer? Where are we going? Does this make sense? <laughs> yeah, where, where are we gonna end up by going this way? And I kind of want to do that inside my head, mm -hmm. but I'm finding that uh, there are just too many cognitive biases. You, you really yeah. can't entirely do it. But you can develop a sense of watching yourself work, which I right. think is important for everybody. Well, that's kind of like with, with Corian's katas and, and even uh, Zetra's um, uh, learn program the hard way. It's you do these things by rote, and you do rote enough that you stop thinking about the problem and you start thinking about how you're approaching it. My fingers, like doing guitar practice, can I get my fingers in that position? You know, it's not, I could just do the same note a hundred times, but I just want to get that position. And it's the same thing with the code. I, I don't want to solve this problem. I just want to solve a problem well. Right. Right. So it's so the Shuhari pattern. We have a card for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. Yeah, it's one of the cards. Um, one thing, though, I just want to tie this into uh, user communities, though. You kind of described uh, a pair as a uh, the, the ultimate small community because it's two people that have to collaborate and agree on a direction and 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 share uh, knowledge of that code and the problem. But in the more macro groups, the user groups and the conferences, you know, you travel all over the world. Have you gotten a chance to go and experience other groups or other conferences and and see you know a conference in Australia as as it compares to a conference in Copenhagen? Um, not quite so much as that. Now, I did just get back from New Zealand, and mm -hmm. I attended the Canterbury Software Summit. And you'll find it's a lot like our conferences here. Mm -hmm. You know, the scale's a little different. Um, the South Island there, they're really now starting to become agile, and they're, they're really using, like, um, distributed governance and all kinds of crazy, you know, we would consider far out. Right. But, but they're small, and they are very tight into their community, and they have their own consultants. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a very tight-knit group and people know each other, and um, they're all in a similar experience of growing toward agility and growing into new technologies. What, what is distributed governance? That's, a, that's kind of an interesting question. There's a nice talk by Scott from AdScale. Um, instead of having a hierarchy of bosses, your company is formed into rings of influence. So uh, maybe you're a programmer, but also you have a, a knack or an interest in the work of uh, maybe writing proposals and, and collecting new business. Mm -hmm. So you may be sitting in both of those rings. Oh, okay. And so there's a ring that decides how to pay the bills and, and what the salaries are, mm -hmm. and, and there's a ring that decides Usually how to... Usually they're very separate. Written. Right. Those guys over there handle economy. Those guys over there handle HR paperwork. So it's actually being uh, managed, ruled, and run by little communities, and people are members of different communities, and, of course, the task is the reason for the team. So... If you're into bill paying and, mm -hmm. and money management, you can be a part of that, that little community within the company. And it's really amazing how well they're doing, how open and transparent and how sharing they are with everything. It's really a great place. Yeah. Now, and I don't see that so much here. Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more hierarchical, a little more rigid. Yeah. Well, anyway, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to sit down. Thank you.